Hey, and I'm a foot and ankle surgeon from Washington State. I've been in practice for over 30 years. I do a lot of uh, foot surgery. I've had thousands of patients that I've operated on. I put a lot of metal in. And over the years, I've had a keen sense of uh, awareness of some of the reactions that can happen with this metal, specifically systemic reactions. I've had a study going on over the past couple decades, over the past 10 years. I've, in, I've surgically removed over 1,000 implants and over 400 patients. Uh, some of the systemic effects that I've seen over the years, muscle spasms, fibromyalgia, joint pain throughout the body, severe fatigue, sleeping problems, migraines, dermatological conditions, emotional issues, exacerbation of rheumatologic conditions, paralysis issues was one that's a little present, neuromuscular conditions throughout the body, uh, reactions of hardware and other parts of the body. Cause and effect is what I'm presenting and where I place metal implants or somebody else has and certain symptoms develop. Metal implants are then removed and certain symptoms either significantly improve or completely resolve. And in many cases, it's completely resolved. Cause, of, cause and effect is very powerful and it's hard to dispute. In my study, it appears we have sensitivity reactions as well as galvanic reactions and allergic reactions or a combination thereof. One thing I've been working on is galvanic or battery type reactions between dissimilar metals in the body. Titanium is positively charged, stainless steel negatively charged, amalgams are negatively charged, and I've had success in removing metal from the feet, improving symptoms in a total knee or hip or back issues. So how much of the body is comprised of electrical impulses? Well, a, a depolarization of the nerve and a nerve impulse fires off at about 70 millivolts. I worked with a, a neurologist, and he does a lot of electrodiagnostic testing, and he recommended we use a voltmeter and ultrasound gel. This is baseline for this testing here, 3.2 millivolts. I then took titanium plate and a stainless steel plate I've taken out of the body, 478 millivolts. Uh, and these are not touching each other. And then I've been having problems with metal in the foot and metal in the mouth. And so I ran this good old Hot Wheels track six foot away and still 118 millivolts. Here's some corrosion from a plate, titanium plate, that was only in there for four and a half months. So first patient, severe back pain, had stainless steel. I placed her foot, to both feet actually, about 20 years ago, three years ago. She had titanium plates and screws in her back, had significant symptoms ongoing. Everything had fused. She then had a total knee implant. Back pain worsened. I ended up removing the stainless steel from her feet, and her back pain essentially resolved. Here's the, some of the hardware. Another patient had an inner stem for an overactive bladder in her back, and I had previously... Two weeks previously, uh, fused her big toe joint with a stainless steel plate and screws. She had no problems at that time. Once she had the inner stem plate, she had significant pains going up her, her left leg and then into her back. And it developed to the point that it was very difficult for her to get up from a sitting position. It was hard for her to get her feet underneath her. And she felt as, she, as if she was going to fall. I removed the hardware and all of her symptoms completely resolved. Here's the inner stem. Another patient, a uh, teacher, uh, age 16, she had her first foot surgery with stainless steel screws. Uh, later, I saw her in her 30s, had to do some revisions, and used titanium. Uh, she had problems with ear wings, felt she had a nickel allergy, removed the stainless steel. She did fine with that. A couple years later, she comes back, and the uh, screw is irritating her. Okay, let's get it out. I was doing the pre-op. She has had a whole list of medications that I didn't remember. I go, what's going on? She goes, well, I have this severe fibromyalgia. I mean, well, how long have you had that? Oh, about two years. Well, what else do you have? Well, I have this chronic fatigue, and it's just terrible. How long have you had that? Two years. Do you have any other metal in your body? No. Do you have any dental fillings? No. Oh, but I have this bar behind my lower teeth. Oh, you have braces. Well, when did you get your braces? Oh, about two years ago. And that's how my conversations go with these patients. So we got her uh, tested, Melisa lymphocyte transformation test. She was positive to nickel and titanium dioxide and to vanadium. And we ended up... Uh, getting her in to get her uh, titanium out. And I will have you listen to a voice memo here. Your foot. So almost immediately after you took the screws out of my feet, I noticed that um, almost all of my body pain and my migraine symptoms had gone away. And within a couple of weeks, actually, all of my rosacea had cleared. Um, so I was able to stop most of my medicines within a month. I was, I think I was taking 18 different medicines for fibromyalgia at that point. And then 
shortly after that, I made an appointment to take the the bar out from my teeth. And since then, I um, don't take I take one uh, pill a day for my migraines, and that's it. All right. Uh, next patient is a uh, was a, an engineer. He had severe neuropathy. He had sores at the tips of his toes, infections, and creel sort of lesions underneath his second and third metatarsals. And he had to I had to shorten the metatarsals, straighten the toes. He did fine with that. Came back five and a half years later. Big toe is curling, creel sort of lesion. Had to fuse that, but I noticed swelling over where we had the hardware. We moved the hardware, and. He ended up uh, coming back a couple weeks later for his second post-op visit. He says, okay, doc, uh, being the ALA engineer that I am, I looked at what happened with my body here. He said, uh, six years ago, I had an ACL repair with titanium screw. Four years ago, prior to the surgery, he just started developing neuropathy symptoms. His feet progressed to his hands, his entire body. He put the hardware in my feet. Three months later, I started developing uh, basically paralysis for 45 minutes every two to three days and up went up to 10 hours a day. He was disabled. He took the screws out of my feet and I went from being paralyzed 10 hours a day to um, one hour a day. Uh, then he ended up, um, we got him tested with a Melisa test and he was uh, positive for nickel and significantly positive for palladium, which he had in six uh, white gold crowns in his mouth, 26% palladium. So here were the screws from his feet and the one from his knee and so we ended up i ended up presenting his case over in london at a lecture on metal allergies uh, or metal sensitivities and reactions associated with systemic effects and this was a letter open letter to dr stetsko vera stetsko who developed the melisa test so even though we never met dr stetsko's impact on my life is immeasurable. Our lives crossed paths after I had been a rigid quadriplegic for over five and a half years. I experienced episodes of paralysis that would leave me completely immobilized, paralyzed for excess of 10 hours a day. Neurologists and geneticists performed neurological and, and genetic testing at the University of Washington and Mayo Clinic over this time without additional diagnosis other than episodic rigid quadriplegia. It wasn't until my podiatrist, Scott, Dr. Scott Schroeder, suggested the Melisa test that I saw any hope. When Dr. Stateskull offered to do the Melisa test, her on a gratis basis was more than I could have ever hoped for. The testing and results allowed me and my doctors to understand what was truly happening in my body. Then we were able to formulate a treatment plan. Today, as I write this, I am completely paralysis free and words cannot express my gratitude for what a difference Dr. State Skull has made in my life. I was told that most likely I'd be in a wheelchair the rest of my life, and just last year I had the opportunity to walk my daughter down the aisle at her wedding. So uh, he had oxidation under these implants. I think he had a galvanic reaction between the two that then exacerbated the sensitivity reaction of the two. So in closing, these diagnostic uh, reactions or, or diagnoses metallic uh, reactions, you have to have a high index of clinical suspicion. And really, we need to train our medical community. A lot of the surgeons and docs in our area have no idea about this. And I would implore the FDA to really work with this in medical school training residencies and CME courses. As far as testing goes, one of my rheumatologists colleague says, I, I don't have great tests all the time, but I uh, have to use those in combination with my clinical information. And so uh, the Melisa test has been significantly important for me, and I really think this needs to be covered by insurance uh, throughout this country to really get this thing going. And we need more implants and better implants for uh, fun, good functioning non-metallic implants as possible. And last slide, and obviously there's more research needed. And uh, but we really have people that are out there suffering now, and so we really need to get this information out to the docs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Speaker number five. There's a few things. About three.